So hello and welcome to a Film Mixologist. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be discussing the uh, um, both the theory and practice of how to performance modify a Weber 32 DMTR carburetor. This is for a, like a Fiat 128 rally, kind of that was the standard fitment. And I'm going to be covering both the theory and the practice of it. So this video is going to be quite pacey. So if you've got any questions, uh, just kind of put it down in the comments and I'll try and, and answer them as soon as I possibly can. So let's start with the theory. So in general, when you're trying to modify a carburetor, what you need to do is you need to start from the point of, of, of greatest restriction to the airflow and move out from there. Yeah. So in this particular case, the maximum point of restriction to, to the airflow is the throttle shaft. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, now a bit, a bit close up. But well, what do I mean by this? So most of the work I am going to do to this car is going to be around the throttle shaft area. And this modification is going to increase the airflow uh, at wide open throttle for this particular unit but I'm going to keep the rest of the kind of the drivability the the idle mid range it's all going to be the same and it's just going to be at wide open throttle that is going to have more flow now I'll show you in a in, I'll show you now closer up a close up what I mean by uh, the restriction and the throttle shaft and how do I go about um, sorting it out so here we are with the carburetor so it's, it's quite close up and I just wanted to show you what I mean but this is the bit of greatest restriction because you can see it there that this the shaft is quite thick in comparison to the bore of the car so just for comparison let me show you this shaft here is a it's a Weber DCOE shaft and it's exactly the same diameter as this one here and this is even better because look this is not exactly round as this one and still it, it's kind of necked down yeah so that's one of the modifications that I'm going to do to this particular one so this is going to be kind of looking more like this one and what do I say that the that it is the shaft that is the most restrictive bit? Because look at if you look at the diameter of the shaft, like for example, this is a Delorto DRLA, but it is the same. And this is a kind of Weber DCNF. If you look, if you look, if you look at them side by side, you see that that the size of the shaft in compar in proportion to the bore let's say the bore is much bigger in this car which is a 40 and therefore proportionally the shaft is much thinner that's what I mean by that the shaft is the main restriction and this has to be worked and quite significantly necked down in order to provide additional airflow to this unit so how do I do that? As I showed you, so well, one of the things that we need to do is we need to work on the on this on the, on the primary shaft so that it, it so it has kind of flatter edges and therefore it presents less of a restriction to the airflow. And on the secondary shaft, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing something akin to this, which is basically I'm going to so this is going to be something like this so I'm going to take off com this top bit completely and, I, and I'm going to secure the throttle plate with two of these uh, so these are very low profile screws um, and therefore this is going to create a situation where the secondary has a much lower l lower profile here and therefore more air is, is going to be able to get through uh, the secondary shaft and the primary as well is going to be a bit modified so now it's time to actually get on and start doing the modification 
<coughs> so now it's time to cut the, the, the secondary shaft and you need to do it really carefully that you only cut the top bit and you don't touch the bottom bit because you need you need material at the bottom to keep the integrity of the shaft obviously I marked here where do I need to make the cut so here we go Okay, so now is the turn of the primary shaft, and I've got, and I've got it in the, in here with the throttle blade. Why? Because um, I need to make sure that that this doesn't collapse uh, on itself. So that's why I generally put put the throttle blade in there, uh, nice and tight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get <coughs> this grind a bit, and I'm going to try to start filing this flatter um, but leaving some material in here so as you can see now um, this shaft is now kind of much thicker thinner in cross-sectional area that it was so I've, uh, this this would have been the shaft for you to see a comparison the only thing that's missing now is that I need to drill the holes in here a bit a bit larger so that I can so that I can so that so that this hole both holes really need to be a bit larger so that I can sink this a bit deeper and therefore it's going to have a lower profile and again gas flow, better gas flow because look this is the original um, screw and this is the one I'm going to replace it with this is like the Ita Italian one and this is like the Spanish one And now it's time to do the same but with the other side of the primary. Now I'm not going to take that much off here 
Uh, I'm just trying to gonna try to make it as straight as I possibly can. Okay, so here's the difference I'm talking about. As you can see, this this bolt is sitting much closer to the, to to here than this one. So that's that's what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm trying to achieve the lowest possible profile here. I might need to drill it just just a touch more, and then I need to start with this one. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to start um, assembling this unit and so what I need to do is I need to put the, the secondary throttles uh, first that's the, that's the first in the order of integration and therefore I'm going to start I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them on and then I'll show you uh, what I've done for the secondaries Okay, so now that I... <coughs> so another basic install for the throttle plates is here as you can see we've got the primary and if we do like this and like this it actuates perfectly and it closes and, and everything's okay so now what I need to do is I need to new, use my Loctite 270 to lock the threads uh, lock the bolts in place um, so I'll do that um, really quickly and then we'll, we'll carry on with the build process okay so this is the end of the project now the, the cub is fully built and obviously we got the operational let me show you manual choke got that operational so that's okay I put a new hose um, here for the for the vacuum for the choke pull off so so this unit is actually rebuilt but I need to show you a couple of things um, first of all, the operation of the throttle. So, a pretty much normal operation, and so at a, up to about one third of the way, you've only got the primaries, and then that's where the kind of the, this modifications start coming into into play because you've got much less restriction to the airflow that you had initially. need to do is rejet the carb so the carb came with 100 in the primary main jet I'm talking about and 115 in the secondary so what I did is I swapped the 115 to the primaries and I'm going to put a 1 to 5 in the secondaries this is because as there is going to be more airflow going through the carb I just need that step up in the jets so that is going to create a situation where the cab is, is, is going to be compensated and is, and is going to run properly. Um, but other than that, this is a kind of fully rebuilt cab. And what it, basically what this does to the performance, well, what I like about this modification is that you have the normal operation of the cab until about 
possibly until about kind of half the throttle opening possibly so that the carb has the same idle performance mid-range fuel economy absolutely everything but it's only when when you when you give it all the all, all the beans that's where you get an additional performance so it's like it's like if the car was going like this and when, when it would start tapering off the power you get you get a lift in power at high rpm high kind of throttle opening so that's what this modification is about to create a car that is kind of cruising along just fine and then but that has that extra little kick up top i mean obviously if you wanted a bigger carb i would probably put just a bigger carb whereas this is just a modification for to give you that little bit extra without messing about with the other characteristics um of the car so so it's gonna go on an internet auction site and for some lucky uh, new owner to buy it so see you on the next episode